I am doing a um, tutorial today on grand mole conversions. And anyone in chemistry knows all about grand mole conversions because you use these literally thousands of times in the course of a semester. So we all know what grams um, would indicate. That's um, looking at the mass of a substance. A lot of people aren't as familiar with moles. Most of the chemistry students watching this um, know what a mole is. The reason it's important to be able to convert back and forth is because our chemical reactions, which are our recipes for chemistry, are measured in moles. And if we're actually doing an experiment, we need to be able to convert those moles to grams so that we can actually get our hands on the substance and, and um, weigh it out and be able to measure things and actually handle things. So um, when you look at a recipe, it's, you know, this many moles of this plus this many moles of that gives you this many moles of something else. So if you think about a chemical reaction just like a recipe, it really makes it a lot easier, especially for beginning students. So I've got a few just quick notes, things to think about. Um, you could take a screenshot of this or copy it later. I would definitely do that for your notebook. But I'm going to start today with going from gram to mole, and then the next tutorial will be mole to gram. So when we go from gram to mole, we need to dig into our chemistry toolbox, and what we're looking for is the molar masses on the periodic table. And... Um, you see these all the time. You use them all the time in chemistry, but these are these are your masses. These are the larger of the two uh, numbers in the box. It's the decimal number, and again, that gives you the mass of one mole of that substance. That's what we're going to be using today, and every single element has its own unique mass. So it's going to be very important that we're using that mass for that element when we do these problems. And the easiest way to do this, in my opinion, is just to jump in. So I've got a couple little examples here we're going to take a look at. So the first problem says, convert 25 grams of nitrogen to moles. What I always tell my students is, first thing, write down the given. That's that number they gave you in the problem. So in this case, we're going to write down 25.0 grams. Now, we don't want to write out the word nitrogen. That's going to take up way too much space, but we know that the chemical symbol for nitrogen is N. And then I tell my students, draw a long line and a short line. This is called factor label, dimensional analysis. Some people call it fence post. It's just a great way to solve a chemistry problem. Now that we've got 25 grams of nitrogen, we know they gave us grams and they want moles. So you ask yourself, what kind of tool do I have in my toolbox to help me toggle back and forth between gram and mole? And that would be the molar mass. If you look at the periodic table, the molar mass of nitrogen is 14.01 grams per mole. That is a ratio. Um, and I want you to think about it like 14.01 grams of nitrogen per mole. One mole is 14.01 grams of nitrogen, or I could even flip it so I can write it this way as well. It's a ratio, so ratios can be flipped. You just got to make sure you have the number with the right unit. These are really the same thing. So what we're asking ourselves is how can I take this, this piece of information and plug it in here so that whatever is here cancels with down here. This is all about, it's almost like a game. It's all about canceling on the diagonal. Whatever unit is here literally has to be here in the bottom step. This is the way I'm going to have to write it to have those grams on the bottom. So I'm going to say 14.01 grams of nitrogen per mole. Because I've labeled everything, I can clearly see my grams are canceling. Uh, nitrogens don't cancel. That's just you keeping up with what you're working with. I have moles on top, and as soon as I've got moles on top, that's what they asked me to solve for. That's my indication. I'm done. So equals. Now, this is a really simple problem, so this is probably a little overkill. Basically, you're just dividing 25 by 14.01. But with factor label, here's what we tell students. Multiply everything on the top together. That's going to be 25. This is just scratch work, so I'm not putting a label with it. Multiply everything on the bottom together. That's going to be 14.01. You just simply divide the top by the bottom. So when you punch in on your calculator 25 divided by 14.01, 
you are going to get 1.78 moles, you can drop the E for your abbreviation, of nitrogen. Put a box around that final answer. That keeps your work nice and neat. It is extremely important that you um, put the unit and you label what it is. You want to make sure you always keep up with that throughout your work. So let's look at another one. So on number two, we're converting 150 grams of zinc to moles. So we write down the given, 150 grams of zinc, that symbol is Z-N, long line, short line, and now we ask ourselves, what kind of tool do I have in my toolbox, my chemistry toolbox, to get me from gram to mole for zinc? And there is one number very specific for that, and that is again going to be your molar mass. And if you look right here, the molar mass for zinc is 65.39 grams per mole. Because gram is on the top here, I know gram has to be on the bottom in the next step. So I'm going to write 63, sorry, 65.39 grams of zinc per mole. Grams cancel, always cancel from top to bottom. Um, these problems are going to get longer later, but they're not going to be hard because you're just going to continue to cancel from top to bottom. It's a great little um, way to think about it. So I'm going to multiply everything on the top together. That is 150.0. Again, this is just some scratch work so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to multiply everything on the bottom together. That is 65.39. I'm going to divide Top by bottom is so nice because if you set it up this way and use this method, you literally get to this point where all you're having to do is divide the top by the bottom. It takes all the guesswork out of it. Um, so when I divide um, 150 by 65.39, I'm going to get about 2.29. And notice, just as a general rule, keep things simple. We're going two places past the decimal. Moles of zinc. Put your unit label what you have, box around the final answer. Now, I want to stop here and point out a couple things. Aside from canceling on the diagonal, the other thing you have noticed is when you're doing this gram-mole ratio, gram-mole conversion, the number always goes with the unit gram. That is because there are this many grams in one mole. If you put the number with mole, you're very quickly going to see something just doesn't look right because there's not going to be 65.39 moles per gram. So you will just know that that looks a little weird. That's why it's so important to write down your units because you'll see those mistakes really quickly. The other thing you may have noticed is I'm never putting a number with the word mole here. It's an understood one. The reason, if you put a one, it's okay. But the reason I don't is because once we get into some problems a little bit further down the road, um, we're going to be looking at some mole-to-mole -mole ratios, and I find that's very confusing to students if you're putting a 1 here. So what I would tell you is mole for now is always by itself. All right, let's look at the next one. Convert 90 grams of sulfuric acid to moles. So again, we're going to start with our given 90 grams. See, you can always write this down. There is there's always one thing you can write down, and if you'll do that, that will get you started. Now, um, we look at sulfuric acid, and you've got a little challenge here. That's not an element on the periodic table. That is a chemical compound, which means there are several elements that have come together to make this. And if you've already had chemical nomenclature, you will know that sulfuric acid comes from the hydronium ion, and the polyatomic ion sulfate. If you crisscross those, you get H2SO4. This is why chemical nomenclature is so important because if you miss these little numbers, if they're not quite right or you've got the wrong elements in there, your molar mass is going to be off as well because we're getting ready to have to do a molar mass problem. So sulfuric acid is H2SO4. So there's our given. Draw your long line and your short line. And now you ask yourself the question, do I have a way to toggle back and forth between grams and moles for sulfuric acid? 
If you look at the periodic table, the first thing you're going to realize is sulfuric acid is not on the periodic table because it's not an element. It's a compound. But we've already learned in calculating molar mass that you can still figure out the mass of H2SO4. And what I'm going to do is just down here at the bottom is just real quickly do a little bit of scratch work and help you figure out this mass. So you know you've got hydrogen, sulfur, and oxygen in this compound. You have, and this is a great little review if you haven't looked at molar mass in a while, you have two hydrogens, you have one sulfur, and you have four oxygens. Now we're going to look up the mass of each of these on the periodic table. Hydrogen has a mass of 1.01 grams per mole. Sulfur is a mass of 32.07 grams per mole. Oxygen has a mass of 16.0. Remember, that's an exception. I always accepted universally 16.0 grams per mole. So we're just calculating this up real quick. So we've had to actually step back. This was a whole lesson um, a few days ago, and now it's just a tiny part of a bigger problem. The good news is it's not hard. 2.02. 32.07, and our 16 times um, 4. So we're going to write all these numbers down. Just double-checking myself because I never trust myself. 64. Now we're going to add all these together, and you should get about um, 98.08. Now, a lot of people just know that off the top of their head because they use it all the time, but that is the molar mass of sulfuric acid. That is the mass in grams per mole I'm going to plug in right here. Again, gram has to be on the bottom. How do I know that? Because it was on the top in the previous step. So 98.08 grams of sulfuric acid per mole. Grams cancel. I've got mole on top. That's kind of like my stop sign. That's what they ask me for. I've got moles of H2SO4 on top, so I'm ready to calculate. So I'm going to divide 90.0 by 98.08. And when I divide those two numbers, I'm going to get 0 0.92 moles. I have to come down here. I'm running out of room. H2SO4. The only difference between this problem and the first two problems was that I just couldn't easily look at the periodic table and get that mass. I had to do a little extra work and find that mass on my own. So that's how you do gram to mole. Basically, when you go from gram to mole, here's another way for you to remember it. You are dividing by the molar mass from the periodic table. So you can make yourself a little note when you go from gram to mole, you are basically dividing by the mass. And that will help you remember how to do that little technique.